Something really important to note, you won't have this smooth slow-mo feature if you have an Intel Mac. So you have to have a Mac that runs on Apple Silicon, which is like the M1, M2, M3 chip. That sucks, I know, but it is what it is. So let's start with this clip. This was shot in 24 frames a second, just of this race car that's sliding by. So it was not shot in a higher frame rate for slow motion. So what you're gonna do is just go to your retime menu and you'll notice you have this new smooth slow-mo tab underneath your slow tab and you can slow it down to 50, 25 or 10%. And when you use this smooth slow-mo tab, it automatically applies the AI machine learning algorithm that it uses, or you can press command R to bring up the retime bar and then you can just drag this out however much you want, but then you'll need to hop in to the retime menu, go to video quality, and then you select best or machine learning. If you already knew that, forgive me, I know there are some out there though that this may be new to them. So I have slowed this down using smooth slow-mo down to 10%, and you'll notice it does a pretty impressive job uh, once again, this was not shot in a higher frame rate, so it was not slow motion. You might be asking, why would I use smooth slow-mo? Can't I just shoot in a higher frame rate, say 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second, and then slow it down normally like you do in post? Yes, you can. And if you plan ahead of time on the day of your shoot, that's the ideal thing to do because that's gonna give you the highest quality slow motion possible but sometimes we make mistakes. For example, let's pretend I shot this and I thought I wanted some fast sequence, so I shot at 24 FPS, and then in post I decided actually this would be a perfect time to use this for B-roll as a slow motion clip. You're kind of screwed, or at least we used to be. This is one reason why you might use smooth slow-mo. We'll go over a few other reasons when and why you might use it, but it's because it gives you that flexibility in post to decide if you want a clip to be slow motion or not. Another example of when smooth slow-mo can come in handy is if your camera doesn't shoot in 4K quality at a higher frame rate. So if your camera doesn't shoot 4K 120 frames a second, then perhaps you can shoot in 4K 60, so you keep that quality, and then use the smooth slow-mo feature to slow it down even more. That way you keep the quality and you get even slower motion. So we have this shot. I think this was probably shot in 60 frames a second, maybe 120 frames, but I think 60. We can press Command R. Another way to use the smooth slow-mo feature is by hitting this little drop-down menu here. Smooth slow-mo, we'll hit 50%, and this will slow it down. Now you can't just leave it here. If I was to play this back, it'll look choppy, and that's because this clip needs to be rendered out in order for you to see it. So instead of rendering the whole timeline, if you have a big video project, that would take way too long, and I wouldn't recommend it. So instead, just select the clip and hit Control R. This will render an individual clip or a selection of clips that you have selected. <laughs> so if I play this back now, you'll notice now it's rendered out and it looks pretty good. I did notice one issue where it's going right by this little piece of grass that's hanging in front of the frame and it had trouble identifying the motion of his legs because of it. But on really, unless you're looking for it or unless you have a keen eye, it's kind of hard to see. So it's surprisingly good. Just as an example, this shot was shot in 24 frames a second, but it's currently being slowed down at using smooth slow-mo and it does a fantastic job. If you look at the smoke, there's not a lot of distortion from it. You don't see a lot of sputtering, especially right in this area. If you look at the car, it does pretty well at following it and keeping a defined perimeter around the cars. And if I turn on the optical flow version, which is what we used to use, Look at that sputtery mess. It looks terrible. The biggest thing that is gonna determine if smooth slow-mo works well is if you have something in your shot that is moving very quick with a lot of motion blur. So for example, the whole shot, this was shot in 24 FPS, but the whole shot looks good other than her pen because it was moving so quick and there was so much motion blur 
that the AI algorithm or whatever had trouble determining where that object is moving from one frame to the next. So keep that in mind. If you have a shot with a lot of fast motion in it, with a lot of motion blur, you're gonna have some issues with it. On that same note, the less movement and the less motion blur that you have in each of your shots, the more you can slow down the clip and get away with it and have it look usable. For example, this is just a clip shot in 24 frames a second, but she doesn't move all that much. Her eyes move the most, and if I go to where she blinks, it looks okay. <laughs> it's not the greatest, but it looks pretty good, surprisingly. Way better than optical flow does. So keep that in mind because it's definitely important. The less movement that you have in your shot with less motion blur, means a better result for smooth slow-mo. For example, this clip also shot in 24 frames a second. I felt that the drone is just moving too quickly down to this guy in the canoe. And so just by using the smooth slow-mo feature, we can slow it down to 10% and it looks pretty incredible. We don't have any sputtering. If we look in the trees, there's not a lot of ghosting. The ripples even look good in the water. And we were able to slow this down to 10% because there's not a lot of that motion blur, not a ton of movement in the shot. Another instance of when smooth slow-mo can come in handy for you is if you want slow motion footage at night, but your camera doesn't have the greatest low light capabilities. So maybe you go out and try and shoot at 60 or 120 frames a second at night. That would mean your shutter speed should be for the most part double that, which means less light gets to your sensor which means in order to compensate for that, you have to bump up your ISO, which will result in a grainy kind of noisy image. So the solution for you would be to shoot in a normal speed frame rate, so 24 or 25 frames a second, because your shutter speed is gonna be a little bit faster, so it's gonna be letting in more light. That way you don't have to bump up your ISO, you can just adjust it in post using smooth slow-mo like we see here. This gives you that much needed flexibility in post. Is it perfect? No, but does it do a surprisingly great job? Totally. What are your thoughts on this feature? Let me know in the comments and check out this video to learn some essential color correction and color grading tips. Have a great day, guys.